Hey friends, welcome to Make It Wednesday. So I haven't done this series for ages, so I'm sorry if you've been missing out on my Wednesday recipes. But Wednesday, 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 Wednesday. But I'm back here again and it's a Wednesday and the idea of this series is that I cook something that's easy enough for you to cook tonight for dinner. So if you don't know what you're cooking tonight, this could be a really good option for you. Now, today I really wanted to go back to one of my all time favorite things to cook and that is fried rice. It is literally the thing that I go back to time and again when I don't know what I'm cooking for dinner or if I'm at home and I'm literally standing in my pantry going, what am I doing here? And I'm just gonna use a whole bunch of kind of like fridge leftover things, but I'm gonna make a really legit Thai fried rice. So I think one of the things that I kind of get a little annoyed about sometimes is that fried rice just becomes like the empty basket that everyone just throws all the stuff in and it comes out a bit kind of like gross. You know what I mean? Like just too much stuff in there. Like there's a way to do leftover fried rice that is actually legit and actually really good. Okay, so first of all, I thought I would use up some Christmas ham that I still had in the fridge. So I'm gonna use that and I just want some chunks of this. And the other thing about this series, guys, is that I wanted to cook it in real time, pretty much. So you know I'm not cheating you on the timings or anything. We are actually doing this together in real time and please do comment below. I would love to hear where you're watching from. What kind of fried rice do you like to cook? What do you do with your leftovers? Tell me all the things. I love to chat to you guys. Uh, and so if you comment below, then I can come back and chat to you and answer any questions you have as well. So that's my ham. Gosh, I do love a Christmas ham. Oh my goodness, so good. I always get sad January and February when I run out of my Christmas ham. Okay, so I just realized that I should probably talk about rice before I do any more of my ingredient prepping. So I just have my rice that I've cooked here. And I know that usually, even in my recipes, I'm always saying to you, use the day old rice. That's the best rice to use for fried rice. And yes, it is the best rice, but not always practical if you don't have leftover rice. So I'm gonna show you what I do with the rice uh, if I'm just using it on the same day or I've just cooked it. There is a little trick here. If you just get your rice out, you can see it's steaming hot here. And I did use a ratio of two cups to two and a half cups of water, if you're wondering. I find in the rice cooker, it tends to dry out a little bit, which is a good thing. So I don't want my rice to be soggy before it even gets stir fried. And I just like to spread it out. And then I actually put it in the fridge while I'm prepping the rest of the ingredients, just to give it a chance to kind of firm up a little bit and dry out a little bit, which we can't see because it's over here. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Now that rice can go back there. Let's talk about the remainder of our ingredients. So I know we talked about the ham and actually I probably forgot to mention, you can use whatever else, you know, other kind of protein that you've got in the fridge, like leftover chicken thighs, for example, or if you've got leftover roast chicken or anything like that, tofu is also great. Just a protein that you've got leftover is fine. Now I'm gonna go in here with some broccolini. Now, typically in Thailand, often we're using um, Chinese broccoli or um, another Asian green in our fried rice, which I really like because you get a little bit of added extra veg into your dinner. But I only had broccolini in my fridge, so I'm gonna go with that. And onion. Now I do think when you're stir frying, the way that you slice things does end up impacting on flavor and just general texture. So I do like to do these onions in sort of like a little wedge. So I've cut it in half and now I've cut this wedge out and these little wedges will separate in the wok. So we've got nice little thin pieces of onion going throughout the stir fry. I like that the onion, when it's a little bit chunky like this, also takes on some like caramelized characters in the wok, which I really like. Gives you that extra smoky kind of wok hay flavor. I'm also highly influenced by, you know, obviously how my mom used to cook fried rice when I was little. And so some of these details are kind of important to me because I guess that's how I grew up 
eating these particular dishes, particularly the Thai dishes that I cook. So you'll often find these little quirks or details of things that have come just from, you know, family recipes, I guess. Now, the other thing which maybe you don't do at home, but we do often do in Thailand, um, and that is adding a tomato to the fried rice. Now, stir fried tomato is actually amazing. So tomato has a great amount of uh, like umami and savory characters, particularly when you cook it. So it just adds to like the flavor, I guess, of the actual fried rice and gives you that savory umami kind of character. So it's a little quirk, I guess, of like home style Thai fried rices, I think. I know my mum certainly always uses it a lot. And then I forgot to mention with the broccolini when I did slice it, so I sort of slice it on an angle here so you get these smaller pieces. Um, now I've done that because you do want everything to kind of cook very quickly in the wok. So even just this piece here is probably a little bit big, so I'm going to thin that out. And just doing this little bit of detail in the prepping means that our wok's gonna stay really nice and hot. We're gonna get a really great char and get that really great wok hay flavor, which is so prized when you're thinking about a fried rice. Well, I, I think so anyway. Any sort of larger stem pieces, just gonna thin those out as well. Okay, you want some garlic as well. And another thing, like I know there's a lot of detail here, but I'm trying to share with you exactly how I would do this at home. And sometimes these little details are really important, as I mentioned. So with the garlic, I don't want it to be too finely chopped. Certainly don't want any kind of fine dining, kind of very finely chopped situation going on. What I want is like chunky bits of garlic that take on, again, some of that lovely stir fried wok flavor. And also chunky garlic won't burn as easily as like a really finely chopped or grated garlic. Fun fact, I do not adhere to the garlic press. I will not use it. I don't own one. I think it crushes the, the garlic and makes it taste weird. That's just my thing. <laughs> okay, so that's me pretty much done for my stir fry ingredients. Now I'm having trouble deciding whether I want to go with egg in the fried rice or fried egg on top of the fried rice. Jamie, what do you think? What would you like today? Fried egg on the top so it gets all like gooey and yummy and the mess of fruit and I like the crispy base that you can on it. All right, your wish is my command. <laughs> so two ways to go here, guys. You could do the egg in the fried rice, omelette style in there, or as Jamie has requested, fried egg on top. So let's do that. Now, always with your wok, you want to wait till the wok heats up before you add the oil in. Now, this is a very small but very important detail. So if you add um, ingredients into a um, cold pan, the ingredients tend to stick. So that happens with woks, happens with stainless steel pans, anything like that. If you wait for the pan to get hot first, and with a wok we want to get it really hot, so like smoking hot, so we make sure we take advantage of all that flavour in the patina of the wok and the wok hay and all that, all that kind of business. We wait for that to smoke so that then when we put the oil in, uh, we don't burn the oil. So the oil goes in, ingredients go in, the oil doesn't burn, the wok's really hot, the food doesn't stick, everything works together really well but it just requires you to wait for the wok to heat up. Okay, so I'm just seeing a little bit of smoke here coming off the wok. I'm not sure if you can see it through the camera, but I can see it and I'm gonna put my oil in. The secret to a crispy Asian egg is that you need to put in a fair amount of oil, so don't be scared about that. And then my egg goes in. You want to hear that bubbling straight away. That's how you know you're doing it right. Just let it kind of do its thing in there for a bit. I like to flick a little bit of oil on the top. And the idea here, as Jamie said before, is that we get a nice crispy bum on the bottom of the egg. Don't get too glow stacks. <laughs> no, I meant too close to the oil. Don't get too close to the oil. <laughs> it's dangerous. I love this style of egg because you get this lovely crispiness and then you get that creamy white, a lovely kind of like runny yolk to break open as well. 
Okay, so this is looking really good. Dax, can you see that browning happening there? Is that looking? I'll turn this egg around for you. There you go. Can you see that there? Yeah. Got that really nice crispy bottom that we were hoping for. Take this out. And that to me is like the perfect crispy Asian egg. I'm going to do one more because I'm sure that more that one more person than Jamie is going to want some lunch today. I'll have two eggs. You'll have two eggs, will you, Jamie? <laughs> so friends, again, please let me know where you're watching from below. I love to hear from you guys. I really love chatting to you in the comments below. So if you have any questions or you have any recipes that you want to request, please do so in the bottom so I can take a look at them and have a chat. Whenever I do this, there's always like one egg that's perfect and one that is a little bit of an ugly duckling. I don't know why, it's just Murphy's Law. Now obviously this extra fried egg step does take a little bit more time. So if you are in a rush or the kids need to get to bed or something like that, you could just do the egg through the fried rice. I've got loads of uh, different fried rice recipes that you guys can access on my website as well. So have a look there. Now with this extra oil in here, I don't need all of that for my fried rice. So I'm just gonna tip some of it out. Before I get the rice, before I start stir frying, I wanna make one more thing. And I think that this one thing is the thing that makes this a legit fried rice, Thai fried rice, even though we're using a, an English baked ham. But <laughs> I think a lot of the time for Thai food in particular, it's often the condiments that really make the dish. So we're gonna make a very traditional, uh, what's called Pricknampla, and it's very simply chilies, some fish sauce, a little bit of lime and some garlic, Sometimes it's just chili and fish sauce, that's okay too. But this is what you find in those little canisters, um, you know, if you're eating street food style in Bangkok or um, in a lot of restaurants as well. And I tell you what, there's no Thai person that wouldn't eat fried rice without this little condiment to drizzle over the top. Number. <laughs> it's, very, it's very close, Dax. Getting there. <laughs> getting there, so you're getting there. <laughs> Pretty good. Maybe, can give Maybe she can give you lessons. Now I just want slices of garlic. Now fish sauce. Okay, so this is one ingredient that you guys tend to ask me a lot about. I think fish sauce is kind of like ketchup. It's like the brand that your mom used or that you ate growing up is the best brand because it's the one that your palate loves the most. Now obviously with Thai food, we have a lot of fish sauce. So I grew up eating this particular brand of fish sauce. It's the one that I think tastes the most like my mum's food. So I naturally gravitate to this. But if you are Vietnamese, you probably have a Vietnamese fish sauce that you use at home. One is not better than the other. It's just a matter of taste. So for me, Thai food, I typically try to use my Thai fish sauce. And for the Vietnamese fish sauce, which I find just a little bit sweeter and rounder than the Thai fish sauce, I'll use that often for my Vietnamese dishes. So that's a little bit of a fish sauce primer. And actually, to be honest, there's some really good vegan fish sauce kicking around as well, which I've tried, which I think actually tastes really good. Okay, a bit of lime in here as well. And that is our Pricknampla, or how do you say it, Dax? Pricknampla. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> See, we're getting a Thai lesson here as well. <laughs> Lovely. So that literally just translates. Prick means chili, nampla is fish sauce. So chili fish sauce. All right. Now we can get stir frying. Oh, no, I've got to get the rice. I'm in and out with this rice, aren't I? I'll go get the rice. Here we go. Pricknampla. Pricknampla. That is the Queensland way to say Pregnumbla. I love it, Sheree. Okay, all the Thai people watching just literally died. 
Uh, it doesn't matter how you say it, it's delicious. <laughs> Funnily enough, just FYI, you can also say numpla brick. So, but Cherie doesn't have that problem. <laughs> just can't say it at all. But <laughs> chili fish sauce. I think that's a good, good way for, for you to describe it. <laughs> okay, so my oil is hot. I'm going to add in my onion. smell of onions hitting oil, like every time I'm like, oh, it smells good. Something good is cooking. Now see how immediately like that onions just sort of untethered itself from all of those wedges. And we've got nice little fine sort of strips of onion in there. Now one other really important thing I think if you want to get some like added flavor or like a more traditional flavor to your stir fry, and that is to use a wok that is seasoned, you know, that is developing patina. Um, all of those things kind of, you know, a really well seasoned wok is what gives you a really lovely smoky flavor to your stir fry dishes, particularly fried rice. For me, a non-stick wok is a no-no. I find that with non-stick, you don't get the food kind of like browning and sticking enough to the pan to get all those Maillard reaction kind of caramelization flavors happening. So a good seasoned wok is another like good ingredient to have here for your fried rice. Now you can see, look, we've got lots of that lovely color happening in there already. I love that. And always with stir fries, you want to go kind of like firm-ish things to non-firm things, if you know what I mean. Like the broccoli is going to take a little bit longer is what I mean. So I'm going to put that in now. Okay, I'm gonna go in with my ham now as well. I want some of that lovely ham kind of fat to start rendering out into my fried rice and my stir fry. Okay, this is looking and smelling so good. If you are cooking along with me, which a lot of you do do, because you write in and let me know, then you should be having a really good time by now. You should be starting to get really hungry. Tomatoes are looking good in there too now. The tomatoes don't need long, that's why I put them in just sort of towards the end here. Okay, I threw my garlic in there at the end because I didn't want it to burn while I was getting my, making sure my broccolini was getting cooked through. Okay, let's go in with our rice. And this is great. So see even now, like it has, it's, it was warm, like and a bit sticky because it's just been cooked, but it's really nice and dry now, even after just a few minutes in the fridge. And now let's talk about our final fried rice seasoning. So I did an episode on soy sauce where I literally tested out all the soy sauces and I had been wondering for years why my fried rice in Australia tasted different to my fried rice in Thailand. And it was simply because I wasn't using Thai soy sauce. Now the Thai soy sauce, as you would have seen if you've seen that episode, is lighter in color and a different flavor to the Chinese soy sauce. So it does actually pay to try to use the Thai soy sauce if you want that traditional Thai flavor. So I've just gone with soy sauce, fish sauce, I'm gonna do a little pinch of sugar because my mum always did. A little bit of white pepper here as well. So for me, a Thai fried rice does not have a really dark color. It has this really nice, lovely golden wok fried color. And that's where it's important to use a Thai style soy sauce because I find you get a much darker result with the Chinese soy sauce. But look, that's not a deal breaker. I don't want you to have to go out and buy a million soy sauces. Any soy sauce, Chinese or Japanese that you have will do the job here. Okay, this is really great guys. And such a great result for rice that was literally just cooked. It's not sticking. It's lovely. All the grains are kind of separated and coated in sauce. Everything smells smoky and yum. I am just gonna try this and make sure I've done an okay job. Mmm, so good. Oh, oh wow, I love that. You know, like the ham has given it such a great flavor, but to me, it still tastes essentially Thai, like my mum's Thai fried rice. I love that. Mmm, so good. Okay, let's plate this up. Which 
one should I go with? Oh, this blue one's very cute. I'm pretty sure my mum like literally had this plate when I was little. So cute. Okay. Am I, should I do, am I molding? Do I want to mold it? Or just put it on? I'm going to go to like the old school mold method. Well, I also was going to go a bit old school and do a decorative cucumber actually. Take it all the way. Take it all the way, okay. So I'm just using a julienne peeler to make myself a little bit of decorative cucumber. I love a decorative fruit or vegetable. I think that's just the, the Thai side coming out. Look at that, it's so cute. It also serves a purpose because like the skin can be a bit bitter, right? But you do want a little bit of that bitter flavor. So you kind of get the best of both worlds there. You totally do not need to mold your rice at all. I'm just being a little fancy because I can be or old school. In fact, it doesn't typically come molded in Thailand either, but I'm just doing it because I want to. Okay, so, ah, oh, look at that. Yum, look at that. Got your broccoli, ham. I want my brick blah, my cucumber. A little extra wedge of lime here on the side. Fried egg on top. Oh my goodness. I mean, oh yes. I love this. I love that we've used some non-traditional leftovers, but we've made a technically perfect fried rice. The perfect grains, the perfect flavor profile in my mind. We have the right condiments. We have the crispy egg. We have everything. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Do I get to eat now? Can I eat this now, Dax? That's my lunch, isn't it? <laughs> I've, I've decided that I'm a little hungry now, Jamie. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, it just looks really good. Yeah. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> wait, no, wait. Spoons and mouths, no forks and mouths, right? It's true. So I give, I give everyone Asian etiquette lessons. Forks are to push the food onto the spoon, spoon in mouth. Pushy. No fork in mouth. No fork in mouth. I believe Hot Thai Kitchen has done a whole episode on Thai etiquette. You could go head there and have a look, actually. Better than Mama Noise? He's not allowed to say that. Mama Noise can hear me. Sure. <laughs> she can hear. <laughs> Honestly, if you're going to make anything, make that fried rice. It is legit. It's, mm. it's so thank good. You. I tried it before. Yeah, I loved it. You. So there you go, guys. Fried rice with leftovers done actually right. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, if you liked this episode, why don't you let me know below because I'm deciding whether I should bring it back as a full on series for you. So let me know or let me know if there are any recipes you would like me to cook. So there you go. See you on another Wednesday.